Hello my fellow bassists. So you've decided to pick up the coolest instrument in the world. Life without bass is meaningless, so congratulations on finding the light. Like millions of other people, learning and playing bass has given me so much fulfillment and joy, and I'm sure it'll be exactly the same for you. In today's lesson, I'm gonna take you from being a complete noob to being able to play two absolutely iconic bass lines. But before we begin, there's a few things that you're gonna need before we get started on your journey here at Basecamp. So the first thing is obviously the bass itself, but you're also gonna need an amp to be able to hear the bass properly and also a cable to connect your bass to the amp. I'd also highly recommend using a strap because that's the only way you're gonna be able to play standing up. And I'd actually also recommend that you use it while you're sitting too. And lastly, a clip-on tuner is incredibly helpful. If you don't have these things, most instrument stores and websites have beginner bass packs that have all of these things in one at a low price. All right, now that you've got all the equipment you need, it's time to plug in your bass, but first, just make sure the amp is turned off. Find the output jack on your bass, which is usually near the knobs, like on this bass. Plug one end of the cable in here and then the other end of the cable into the input of the amp. Now make sure the volume of your amp is at zero and then turn it on. Then gradually increase the volume of the amp and try plucking the strings on your bass. If you can't hear anything, it probably means that the volume knob on your bass is at zero. So the way you're gonna fix that is to just pluck an open string and then Mess around with some of the knobs on the bass until you find the one that causes drastic volume changes. When you find that knob, turn it all the way clockwise and then turn all the other knobs on your bass to five. If you're happy with that volume, you can move on to the next step or if it's too loud or too quiet, you can adjust the volume knob on your amp accordingly and for now, just keep the other knobs on the amp at five. The next thing that you need to do is tune your bass. So each of the strings is tuned to a specific note and you get it perfectly in tune using these things here which we call tuning pegs. So the thickest string closest to you is the E string and then you've got the A, the D and the G string. The easiest way to tune is with a clip-on tuner or tuning app. Just play the E string and see which note name is displayed on the screen. All right, so we've got an E luckily. Your goal is for the note displayed on the screen to be an E and for the needle to be in the center of the screen. So we're just slightly flat there. It's a little bit closer, but still flat. Perfect. On most basses, turning the peg anti-clockwise raises the pitch of the string, but make sure you're listening as you experiment because the direction that you turn the peg can vary between basses. Keep plucking and turning the peg until the needle moves to the middle of the screen, and then repeat this process for the A, D, and G strings. All right, now just double check you're in tune by playing the open strings along with me, and just listen and make sure that the notes are the same. Amazing, it's almost time to start playing, but first I just want to make sure that your strap is at a good length. So you've probably noticed that your favorite bassists wear their basses at a variety of different heights, so I'm not going to be too militant about this. But in general, setting your bass strap at a length where it sits the same height regardless of whether it's resting on your right leg when you're sitting or whether you're standing up is a pretty good rule of thumb. This is a good height that will allow your left wrist to be in a more natural position, which is gonna give you more freedom when you're playing and also prevent injuries. But if you really wanna go full Rob Trujillo, I'm not gonna stop you, just try not to injure yourself. All right, now we've got the boring but important stuff out of the way, it's time to start playing. The first thing we're gonna do is just pluck the open strings using your right hand. So take your right thumb and put it on the pickup nearest the fretboard and just rest it there. The pickups are these blocks and if your bass only has one of them, just rest your right thumb on that. And now just try plucking the E string a few times along with me. Mm -hmm. 
Make sure to only use your index and middle fingers for now and alternate between those fingers. Index, middle, index, middle, index, middle, index, middle. Now try that on the A string, but rest your thumb on the E string instead. And one other thing, when you're plucking, make sure you're plucking through the string rather than up like this. Instead, make sure you're going through. Now try the exact same thing on the D string, but rest your thumb on the A string. And keep your thumb on that A string, but pluck the G string now instead. Awesome, you've got the right hand down, now we just need to introduce the left hand. To get a really comfortable and natural left hand grip, just hold your hand out in front of you and keep it pretty relaxed. Then just maintain this position and just put it on the base with your thumb behind the neck like this. You don't have to have a very tight grip at all. In fact, having kind of a looser grip will allow you to play with much more freedom. Each of these metal bars is called a fret and each fret has a number. So you've got fret one, fret two, fret three, all the way up to fret 24 on this bass. Each fret also corresponds to a different note on the bass. And eventually you're gonna to wanna to learn all of the notes on the bass and you can start doing that by going to this video. So for this reason, the left hand is often called the fretting hand because it determines which fret you're playing. When you play a fret, let's just take fret five on the E string for now. You wanna keep your finger pretty close to the fret that you're playing. That's gonna give you a much more pure and clean sound and it's gonna stop potential buzzing that you can get if you're too far away from the fret like this. If you can, I'd recommend using one finger per fret. This is a very simple but incredibly efficient and effective solution that's gonna make playing complicated stuff much easier. Here's a little exercise I created that'll get you used to using one finger per fret. You're gonna see some tabs at the bottom. Tabs are a really great notation system for when you're first starting out on bass. I use them a lot in the beginning and it helped me learn my favorite bass lines really quickly. You'll pick it up quickly too, but essentially each line represents one of the strings on the bass, with the bottom line being E, then A, then D, and then G. The numbers on the line represent the fret that you're playing on that string. And that's really all you need to know about tabs for now. So try playing this exercise along with me. Awesome, you've got all the basic technique down now. If that last exercise was too fast, feel free to go back to it and just play it with slow motion using the YouTube playback controls. All right, you might not believe me, but you're actually ready now to learn one of the most famous bass lines of all time. Yep, that's right. Another One Bites the Dust by Queen with John Deacon on bass is a really nice, easy bass line that you can definitely learn in the next couple of minutes. First, just watch and listen to me play it a couple of times, and then you can play along with me. All right, now try playing along. Now you might have noticed it sounds a little bit different when we play it than it does on the original recording. The reason for that is I haven't taught you one last little thing that's so simple but it's gonna take your playing up 10 levels and that's muting. 
Muting is what allows you to stop a note from ringing and it's absolutely essential for you to being able to play great bass lines. There's two main ways to mute on a bass. You can either use all of the fingers on your left hand and just place them across the strings like this. Or you can use the index or middle finger on your right hand like this. Either is fine, I often end up doing both, but just feel free to do whichever one feels the easiest and most comfortable for you. This bass line is absolutely perfect for practicing muting because most of the notes are quite short, meaning that you have to use muting quite a lot. So now try playing another one bites the dust along with me again, but this time use muting to keep the notes short. Amazing, you just learned one of the most famous bass lines of all time, and it's only your first bass lesson. I'm gonna teach you one more bass line today so your friends know it wasn't a fluke. This one's Sunshine of Your Love by Cream, and it gets you practicing more on the G and D strings. Watch and listen to me play it, and then try playing along with me. Now try playing along with me. Congrats, you just finished your first bass lesson and learned two of the most iconic bass lines of all time. You've taken your very first steps on what I'm sure will be an incredible journey. If you're feeling excited and want to learn another iconic bass line, head over to the Basecamp Patreon where you can get a practice video, backing tracks and tabs for Stand By Me. This is also the way to improve the most quickly and effectively if that's your goal because that's where I post weekly lessons and exercises and you'll get instant access to a huge back catalogue of practice videos, backing tracks and tabs. As always, let me know if you have any questions or feedback. Thank you so much for coming here and practicing with me and I'll see you in the next lesson.